Fun fact, the southern state of Georgia was actually named after the British King George II, and while the origin of the name isn't very American, the people, the food, and the culture of Georgia sure are. Ooh, welcome back to Cooking the States, a series where we cook a famous dish from a different state in every episode in an attempt to get to the bottom of the identity of American food. Okay, so Georgia is literally nicknamed the Peach State. And that's because they produce 2.6 million bushels per year. And a bushel is about 60 pounds, so do the math. It would be culinarily irresponsible of us not to dive into this peachy goodness, so let's make some ice cream. Just get a lot of these juicy orange lacrosse bowls. How glorious is that? Nothing says summer like a sticky peach dripped chin. The first way that we are going to add peach flavor to our ice cream is in puree form. And to make that peach puree, we are gonna start by scoring an X shape into the bottom of each peach, and that's just gonna make the skin easier to remove once they're dropped into boiling water for one minute, then shocked in an ice bath. Use a paring knife or your little fingies to peel the skin right off the peaches. It should come off super easily since we blanch them. You're gonna discard that skin, then use a knife to cut the peaches into slices or chunks. And it really doesn't matter how you cut them as long as they're uniform in size. Drop four cups of the peeled and sliced peaches into a large pot, then add a cup of water, a pinch of salt, two teaspoons of sugar, and the juice of half a lemon. Cook the peaches down on low-medium heat for about 20 minutes, then blend them with a stick, aka immersion blender, and continue simmering for 40 more minutes, or just until the mixture reduces by about a quarter or so. If your peach puree begins to caramelize a bit, that's totally fine, but I prefer a pale golden peach puree here, so I'm keeping the heat super low. Let that cool down a bit before storing it in a resealable container in the fridge until we need it. The second method that we'll use to impart peachy flavor into our ice cream is by sprinkling in some peach powder, which really just means that we're gonna place a bunch of thinly sliced peaches on a single layer in a dehydrator and run the machine until they crack in half. If you wanna skip this step, you totally can, but let me tell you, the ice cream is not going to be nearly as peachy. And keep in mind that adding extra peach puree to compensate is just gonna mess with the final texture. Once your peaches are dry enough, you can either add them to a blender or a spice grinder and just kinda of blitz them until a powder forms. Don't worry if there are some odd shapes and uh, unground pieces in the mix because we're just gonna end up straining most of this anyways, so just try to get it as nice and fine as you can. Okay, so ice cream base does not involve many ingredients, so it's important that we use the highest quality of the ingredients that are in ice cream. And what I mean by that is good quality dairy and good quality eggs. Whoa, bro! <laughs> Sick! I like to crack all of my eggs into a single container, then sift out the yolks by hand as needed. This way there's kind of less yolk breakage. Into a saucepan over medium heat, add in 500 grams of whole milk, 500 grams of heavy cream, 80 grams of glucose syrup, 160 grams of sugar, 50 grams of milk powder, 8 egg yolks, 3 grams of vanilla extract, 25 grams of peach powder, 270 grams of peach puree, and 3 grams of kosher salt. Whisk that around until smooth as a baby's bottom, then gently cook the whole mixture to 180 Fahrenheit or 82 Celsius, or really until the mixture turns nappé, which is just a fancy way of saying that it coats the back of a spoon. Once that happens, add in the gram of xanthan gum and use your immersion blender to puree everything together. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can totally just pour this in a blender and do it like that. So I know some of these ingredients might not be in the average home cook's larder, but they each play a pivotal role in the final result, and I'll totally have more information and details about the ingredients and the recipe over on my website. Pass the ice cream base through a mesh strainer into a bowl placed in an ice bath, then whisk everything around to chill it down. You can cover that, pop it in the fridge, and let it rest overnight or up to three days. I know it's annoying, but you need to let this base rest in the fridge overnight to thicken up to let the flavors develop and to allow all the sugars and everything else to kind of dissolve and mingle with one another. If you skip the step, your final ice cream is not going to be nearly as smooth or tasty. Lucky for us, I made a batch of this exact base last night, so we are RTC. Ready to churn. See how much thicker that is. All right, so this is what a really fancy, really expensive ice cream machine looks like. And let me tell you, it's amazing. 
However, it is not mine. It's my buddy Chef Joe Sastos. So uh, thank you for letting me use your cream machine. Love you, boy. When the homie asks, they shall receive. You're welcome, buddy. That's what they do, used to do before like people had phones. Just watch your cream churn. At the end of the day, no matter which machine you decide to use, as long as it can churn the ice cream and get the job done, you're gonna be fine. Just follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer until your base starts to look like frozen custard. Once it's at that stage, transfer it all to a freezer safe container, close it up, then let it freeze over completely for at least six hours, or better yet, overnight. While we wait on that, let's make some super simple homemade cones. Start by adding two large egg whites and 110 grams of brown sugar to a bowl. Whisk that all up until the mixture lightens up a bit and the sugar seems to be mostly dissolved. Pour in 30 grams of heavy cream, 28 grams of melted butter, 40 grams of water, and 85 grams of all-purpose flour. Finish with a pinch of salt and you should be left with a viscous, almost dolce de leche looking mixture. Preheat your oven to 400 Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius, then place a large baking tray lined with a Silpat non-stick mat in it. Let the tray charge with heat for five minutes, then remove it from the oven and spoon out about one to one and a half ounces or roughly 40 grams of batter onto the mat. Spread it thin, then bake for five to six minutes. Scrunch some tinfoil into a cone shape to use as a mold, then form the batter sheets around the mold, making sure to pinch the bottoms closed. The cones are gonna dry super fast, so you can pretty much use these right away. This is a riff off of a Chef John recipe, shout out Food Wishes. Uh, they're very interesting cones. They're sort of a mixture between a waffle and a sugar cone, and honestly, to me, they taste a lot like fortune cookies. So if you hate this ice cream recipe, hate me, hate everything I stand for, at least you got a fortune cookie recipe out of the whole thing. Oh, and you can also get super crazy and make a bowl cone if that strikes your fancy. After a day in the ice chamber, your ice cream should be G to G. You're just gonna wanna take it out a few minutes before you wanna serve it to kinda let it temper, and then you're gonna wanna scoop it with a warm ice cream scoop or a spoon and serve it immediately. <laughs> can you get three, dude? Let's go! Gonna be, this is gonna make a lot of people angry, but it's just the way I live my life. <laughs> the tea. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful color. That's from the peach puree. You can see little speckles, but not really too big of the peach powder. And it's a little on the peachier colored side, which works out very nicely because of those egg yolks. Um, but you know, you can kind of see the aeration in that. That's a very distinctly American trait. You're not gonna see that in gelato. I definitely self-identify as a bull person, but these cones are something special. God bless America. I don't have much a sweet tooth, but if I had to choose my favorite dessert, it would probably be ice cream. It would probably be that sweet, sweet cream. Call me basic. It's just what I like. Thanks for watching, and remember to let me know what you'd like to see me make for your home state if it's coming up here on the horizon. And even if we already did your state, we're probably gonna take a second lap, so still go ahead and comment. Subscribe to the channel if you dug the video. Join the omnivore niche. Next episode, we are heading to the farthest reaches of the United States, to the beautiful, wonderful, tropical paradise of Hawaii. It's gonna be a good one. You should tune into it. I'm planning something very special. See, it's super hot. I'm sweating. The peach ice cream was necessary, so thanks so much for watching once again, and I shall see you next time.